Okay, perfect. All right, well, Annie, it's good to have you come in today. It's been a long time since I've seen you. How has life been recently? Um, it's been it's been good, just fast paced. You know, getting some new positions at work. Okay. I mean, I can't think of anything that's like super different than my normal, but it's been good. Yeah, and it's been a really long time since I've seen you. Remind me what you do for work again. Yeah, so I'm a banker. Okay, I'm actually gotcha. working on Wall Street right now. That's a really high stress job, I know. How have you felt about that lately? How's it been? Um, I mean, like, I take a lot of pride in my work, and so, like, I'm really proud of, like, the place that I'm at, and, you know, I'm, I've made a lot of sacrifices to get here, but also it's, like, I mean, it's Wall Street, and yeah. it's an important position, and I'm also, I'm just working so much, like, I, I feel like it's kind of all-consuming in some ways, but... But like, it's important to me and I'm, you know, happy that I'm here, but I'm definitely feeling just like, it's a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, like you mentioned, I'm glad that you at least appreciate what you're doing and you're glad that it's the career path that you chose. I have actually a couple of good friends from college who also work in banking. And it was funny, they sent me over an article the other day that it was an internal survey released about what employees at these banks think about their jobs and how they're kind of doing emotionally and it was it was pretty rough they they yeah. rated it like a one or a two out of ten on how they felt i'm not surprised <laughs> um so yeah I, I hope you know that i i definitely emphasize with you i know that that's brings a lot of stress and there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that yeah um where do you feel like most of your stress comes from at work what do you think is the biggest cause of it there oh gosh i mean like so i've worked at a few other banks okay. and you know, throughout my career, and this is just like way more fast paced. Like, there's so many expectations put on me. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have this, you know, direct supervisor, and he's great. I mean, we work well together, but there's just there's so much intense pressure to get to meet deadlines and to bring yeah. in big clients. Like, I just kind of feel like he's. I always have someone breathing down my neck. Yeah. And how do you feel like having that person breathing down your neck and these deadlines is affecting you physically? I know you mentioned it's kind of bringing you some stress, but other than that, do you feel like it has any other physical effects on you? Man, I haven't really thought about it like that, but physically, I just, I feel super anxious. I feel super tired and just kind of like, I can't wait for the weekend and I can't wait for the workday to be over. And like, I just, I need a break. You know, I'm just so tired. Yeah, I know. I know a lot of those jobs require you working lots of hours a week. How has your sleep been lately? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to answer that question. Yeah. Um, really bad. Okay. Like, I just, I'm like rarely getting enough sleep. Interesting. Ever. Yeah. Like I can't fall asleep. Um, and I also can't get out of bed in the morning very easily. Gotcha. And like when I come to work, I just feel like a zombie. Like I'm so groggy and tired. That's tough. I know. A lot of times when you're working those long jobs, you just feel like you can never get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. I know that's a job that requires you to be pretty alert and doing a lot of things in the job. How do you kind of deal with that lack of sleep, but then having to be really productive at work during the day? Um, this is definitely like something that I wanted to address. Okay. Just my energy levels in general. Yeah. Um, but some things that I'm trying to do is like just treat with caffeine. I mean, that's kind of like what everyone does yeah. in my job. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just caffeine has kind of been my approach. And do you feel like caffeine has been effective in helping you to treat kind of those feelings of tiredness that you've been experiencing at work? Um, like initially, like it kind of gets yeah. me through like the 9 a.m. Um, you yeah. know, like getting, the worst of it. Yeah, yeah. like getting me out of bed and getting me going. Okay. So I think in that way, like it's, it's working. Yeah. Interesting. And so you talked about using caffeine. Are you drinking coffee? Is it energy drinks? Is it tea, soda? What kind of do you use to consume caffeine? So I usually have an energy drink in the morning. In the morning gotcha. Um, and then I have an energy drink like with lunch. Okay. So you're drinking two energy drinks a day. And what energy drinks are you drinking? Uh, have you heard of Bangs? I have. Those, those have a lot of caffeine <laughs> in them, that's for sure. Oh no. <laughs> um, is that pretty common at your work that a lot of people are drinking energy drinks or drinking coffee to kind of stay alert? Is that pretty, Oh yeah, like common? everyone does it. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so you mentioned kind of having these feelings of tiredness and of like headaches and stuff like that and you feel like the caffeine is helping to treat it initially. 
Um, kind of looking to the future, what are your thoughts for what you want to kind of do approaching this in the future? Are you thinking, hey, I'll just use caffeine every day and this kind of works okay? Are you looking for a different way to kind of address these problems? Well, I like somewhat know that caffeine's not good for me, like yeah. long term. Like I know that it probably like affects my heart and stuff and yeah, yeah, yeah. like my mentality in general. But I am kind of in a rough spot because I want to do something else. But every time I try to, like, if I don't drink an energy drink or I forget or I don't have one on me, mm -hmm. then I just have, like, this intense headache that doesn't go away until, I, like, the end of the day. Yeah. Like, it's just super bad. And that's, that's a pretty common symptom for a lot of people who consume a lot of caffeine regularly, is that when they stop drinking caffeine or when they miss um, drinking their normal coffee or their normal energy drink, they get pretty bad feelings of headaches. Um, and just because, like normal, right, your body gets used to having a substance in your body. Caffeine works by blocking something called adenosine um, in your body. It blocks these adenosine receptors. And so essentially what it does is it takes away um, those signals in your body that sig sig signal you to be tired. Mm -hmm. So when you don't have that ca ca caffeine and those receptors aren't blocked, essentially what happens is that big rush of those signals that make you feel tired comes in. And so that's kind of what leads to, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of the caffeine crash, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that's why you kind of have this crash and you a lot of times you feel headaches, sometimes you just have other problems when you're consuming large amounts of caffeine and then you stop. Um, so you mentioned you're drinking two bangs a day, and those, those have a lot of caffeine. Those normally have 300 milligrams per one can. So if you're drinking two a day, that's around 600 milligrams. Um, studies have shown that a small amount of caffeine is okay and doesn't have a lot of effects on the body. The FDA, according to, I have some notes here, according to um, some recent studies, they've kind of capped it at 400 milligrams. And that's kind of really the upper limit of where you'd want to be at if you're consuming caffeine on a regular basis. So since you mentioned you're consuming 600 milligrams of caffeine, that's a little bit concerning to me, just in the fact that it can lead to some problems down the line. I know you mentioned you'd heard that caffeine isn't great for heart health and um, a lot of times it can have some impacts on stress and kind of mental health with how people are feeling. And so I think it'd be a really good thing to try to be able to find some alternative ways to maybe lessen that caffeine intake. Um, if you're taking caffeine in a lower dose, um, semi-regularly, that's okay. A lot of people do that and they don't experience any big problems. So I think maybe a good goal for, for you would maybe be to potentially to try to reduce that to 300 milligrams a day and just drinking one energy drink. Okay. I know like you said, work is stressful, right? And I know you're particularly at a time in your life where there's a lot more work. Um, and at a certain time, there's just not enough hours in the day to get everything done. But I think kind of by mitigating and optimizing some of the things that we're doing, it can best help us to kind of address these problems. Um, one area that I think is really important, like you mentioned, that's going to be helpful for sleep, is sleep hygiene. Have you ever heard that term, sleep hygiene, before? No, I haven't. Yeah, so sleep hygiene is essentially the habits that we have regarding our sleep mm -hmm. and some of the things that we can do to really help optimize that time that we get to sleep. I know you mentioned you're spending a lot of hours at the office, which leaves you not as many hours to be at home to actually get that sleep. So I think it's really important to optimize that time. Um, walk me through your typical routine for when you're going to sleep. Say, you get home from work, you eat, and you're kind of getting ready to go to bed. What is your normal routine for before you kind of want to go to sleep? Um, so usually, there's a gym at my work. Gotcha. And so, like, I get off at, like, 7.38. Okay. And then I go to the gym, and then I come straight home, eat dinner, and then go to bed, like, sometime, I don't know, sometimes between, like, 10 and 12. Okay. But it's, like, right after I go to the gym and okay. right after I eat. And then I usually kind of just, like, sit and scroll my phone, and then I can't fall asleep forever. Yeah, I don't blame you. I think that's a pretty common um, thing that a lot of people do, right? Is they're in their bed, they're looking at their phone, they kind of want to just be updated until they go to bed. Um, thank you for sharing that with me. I think one area that you could potentially work on to kind of help mitigate some of these um, feelings of tiredness at work and to kind of help reduce the need for caffeine is to work on a couple of these habits you have in regards to sleep. It's different for everybody and it's different according to the habits that you have, but there's a couple of things that have been shown in studies to have kind of some negative effects on sleep. One of those is working out right before you go to bed because mm -hmm. when you work out, you're increasing, you're doing a lot of physical work, right? It's kind of activating your body in a couple of different ways. And a lot of times it can take people a little bit to come down from that workout to be able to really feel um, more relaxed and be able to kind of get into that state that they need to be, to sleep. 
Um, so that's one potential thing. I don't know what your specific schedule is like, but maybe you could potentially look at shifting some of your work in the morning to later in the night and doing your workout in the morning. I think that could really help you uh, prepare to sleep better so that when you do get home and you want to go to bed, you're able to fall asleep quickly. The other thing that you mentioned that is really hard and affects a lot of sleep is using your phone in bed. Um, when you're on your phone in bed, what are you normally doing? Are you calling people, just looking at social media? What's kind of the normal? Just scrolling, yeah. Instagram, Reels. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do the same thing sometimes. And I think a lot of times, especially after a stressful day, you kind of want a detox a little bit from other life. And so by just scrolling Reels, it kind of lets your brain shut off for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely relate with you on that. Something that's been shown is that scrolling in bed, the blue light that's on your eyes, and then also using your phone in bed kind of signals to your brain that the place that you're at, this bed, is not just for sleeping, but it's also for other things. Um, and when you kind of have that um, dual um, purpose of your bed in your brain, it makes it harder to sleep. So something that I would love to recommend to you is potentially to maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes before you go, go to bed, just plug in your phone. Uh, something that I do personally is I actually just plug in my phone outside my room. That way I'm just not even tempted to look at my phone when I'm in my, in my room. Because if it is there, a lot of times people text or email or whatever and I, and I look at it. And so, so that's something that's really helpful to me that kind of helps signal to my brain that my bed is just the place for sleep and that's it. Do you feel like that's something that could be useful to you? Yeah, I mean, it seems like a pretty easy thing to change. Yeah, it probably definitely. isn't that easy. Harder, harder said than done, but I think <laughs> yeah. it's a good place to kind of think about to, to start. Yeah, I can definitely do that, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, do you have any other questions today? Any other things you want to address? Uh, no, thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Well, maybe we can look forward to in the future um, kind of seeing some how these things help, and we'll go from that. Okay, sounds good. Awesome.